Hi everyone, welcome to Being Youthful. I'm Kim Beegler. I am the owner of Youthful Fiber Farm and Mill, and I talk about all things yarn making, owning a wool, owning a farm, animals, everything that goes on. So this episode, I'm gonna talk a little bit about, catch you guys up on kind of some of the things that I'm working on personally and when I'm at home, which isn't always personal. Sometimes it's work stuff too. And then at the end, I also have a video of me skirting some wool and um, that'll be fun for any of you interested in skirting wool or who have skirted, don't feel confident, whatever. I'm a very no rules type of person, just get the job done. So, sorry, I, there's like literally nobody around and somehow loud cars keep driving me by. Um, anyway, here we are. Okay, so that'll be fun. And I did, and I will um, put the date maybe here. I posted about a half hour video that I did on skirting wool, just me skirting out a couple different breeds of fleeces. I was doing it live on Instagram, so it's on Instagram. I'll put the date of it here, so if you really want to see more about skirting wool, you can pop over to Instagram and watch that for a long, long time. Okay, so what I am working on. Okay, so update on my socks. I, I kind of had put them down a little bit, not a ton. I haven't been knitting like crazy, so um, socks. Here they are, two at a time, so you can actually see the pattern, which is going well. Again, again, when I was doing the gusset, I kind of mixed up which direction my socks were on the needle, so I had to do a little, but next time I'm gonna nail it. This is only the second time I've done two at a time on two circular needles, so next time I'm gonna nail that sucker. But it's going well, you can see I've got, I'm just working on, um, I picked up all my stitches and now I'm just working through that so i'm going on a trip here tomorrow i'm leaving on a trip which by the time you guys watch this i will be on the trip and of course i'm like do i have enough projects what's the project situation i have to be able just to like knit 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 right when you're working on a project on a trip other than the plane time i've got to be able to not focus while working so i want to get these this is probably what i'll work on on the plane although the next project i have is pretty simple too so we're making progress on those. This is using our Prineville Youthful's Prineville wool mohair yarn. Um, I'm knitting these, and this is the Rye Light by Tin Can Knits is the pattern. I'm knitting them on a two, mostly because I just wanted to try it out to see what the fabric is like. Usually I would knit on a one and a half on these, but um, okay, that's where those are at. Making progress, making progress. So I cast something new on because well, one, because we have new yarn in the shop, and two, because I'm going on a trip and I needed to make sure I had enough projects. So, new projects is very new. It's very new. Like, what is it, you say? That's how new we are. Sorry, I'm not being very organized with my yarn. That's how far we got. I cast on last night and did the first, I think, three rows of it. So, here's where we are. It's just knit and pearl. I'm using the new, the um, Sistari. <laughs> um, I literally, if you knew where my building was, there's nothing around here in the, the manufacturing place that's across the street. They went home early for the day. So anyway, okay, so I am working on this. This is the Sistari Old Dominion yarn. It's cotton, 100% cotton, uh, grown in Virginia and milled in Virginia, and we have it in the online shop now. I am using the colorway, what colorway am I using? Blue J Blue. Um, so this is what I'm knitting. So it's a little summer top, which I have been dying to do some summer tops, but I didn't really want to do them in wool. Um, so, and I have found like the shirt that I have on today, I had to be very mindful of the weather. I've had it forever, I love it, but it's totally synthetic and I will just sweat like a pig. Um, not that pigs sweat. So now that I know that, <laughs> There goes that phrase out the window. I hadn't even thought about it. I will sweat like a whatever, and like me when I'm hot and wearing synthetic clothes. It's not pretty as I get older. So I need to wear like cottons and linens and things like that during the summer to keep me from melting. And I'm excited to have the cotton yarn and to do this. So this is the, I'm gonna say it's Ankers, A-N-K-E-R-S, summer sweater. I'll put the link in the show notes. Uh, it's by Petite Knit. I've been wanting, I've never done one of her patterns. I've been wanting to do one for a while. 
Um, so this is in, obviously it's a DK weight and I am using, what did I decide to use size sixes on it? So it's gonna, it should go pretty quick and it's super basic now that I've started it. It looks so cute. I don't know if you can see her picture, but you can always look the top, but it's really just ribbing with stockinette stitch in between. So ribbing, stockinette stitch, ribbing, so, so easy, but it looks so cute. So I'm excited to get this sucker going. This is what I'll be working on a lot of the trip because that's pretty easy actually, just to knit and purl and then do stockinette for a couple rows. So that's what I'm working on there and I'm excited and there's lots of colors available in that yarn. So if you like it, go grab some up. There is another pattern and maybe I'll put the name of it here. I forgot to look it up, but it's a tank top. There's just all these tops that are in cotton that I've been really excited to knit. So. I'll be working on that, trying to bust it out pretty quick. I have a finished object, you guys. Woohoo! Okay, it's a hat, so it's not super exciting, but I'm gonna, I put it on my mannequin so that you could actually see the pattern and not have me awkwardly trying to move my head around. Isn't that so pretty? So this is the antler toque. This is by Tin Can Knits again. I'm off by Tin Can Knits. I, I'm, I moved on. I've moved on to a different, not that they're amazing designers, but look at the top of that. It's so pretty. So I used um, our Youthful Jacob yarn, which I have some samples here. I used the darkest color, uh, which I think it still showed the pattern. I did it on purpose. Usually I would do a lighter color, but I still think it showed the pattern really awesomely. So it's a cabled hat, obviously. Not obviously, it's cabled. Um, there is another natural in a lighter gray if you wanted the pattern to show up a little bit better. And then I do have some dyed, like I thought this would be actually really pretty in it. Um, so anyway, that is done. Like I said, I used, I think it called for an eight and I actually used the eight and this is our youthful Jacob and I am so happy. Isn't she pretty um, with how it turned out? So there you go. Okay. Um, and it actually fits, which is lovely, right? The worst to hit a nat, uh, knit a hat up and then it doesn't really fit. Mm, it's actually worse to knit a sweater up, but okay. So that's kind of what I've been working on. Otherwise I have been, I haven't been weaving an ounce. My loom is stuffed into the closet and hopefully I'll pull that out when I get back. I have been spinning a little bit. I kind of went on a spinning craze and now I've backed off a little bit and I need to do a lot of plying. So do I have enough products? That's the question, right? So I have my sweater top, not my sweater top, my summer top. I have my socks. I may, if I panic, ball up um, my Patrick yarn. That's my Shetland yarn that I showed a couple episodes back and cast on the Wendy's favorite Charlotte, which I've been meaning to do. We'll see how it goes. I feel really good about three patterns, <laughs> three projects with me. That makes me, and then of course I have my book, and then of course I have my Kindle for my business stuff that I read. There's plenty, but I'm hoping to get just a little bit of pool time in. I'm headed to my nephew's graduation. First nephew to graduate from high school. Yay! Um, okay, so I think that's all I had to share at the moment. Uh, let's go check out the skirting video. And like I said, I am very, like, just lay the fleece out however you can lay it out preferably 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 uh, outside in good light and on something that like i i have a wire skirting table so everything drops out underneath even like a picnic tape i mean you could just get some wire fencing and even stretch that out outside over something so that you can put the fleece on you don't have to lay the whole thing out perfectly you can do it in chunks there's no rules to this but you want to have it over something where all that vegetable matter any second cuts anything like that can drop out easily that's the key that's the key so i'll be back in a minute and uh enjoy the video okay guys i just did a live on Instagram with skirting a bunch of fleeces, but I thought I would do one here now um, for you guys. And I, so this is a border luster fleece. As I open up the bag, you can see, that doesn't mean the whole fleece is like that. What that means is I'm gonna guess almost 100% that that is the neck. And that's why there's so much hay there. Sheep love to throw the hay on each other, at each other, dive through it, whatever. So the neck tends to be a spot that gets hit quite a bit. Let me set you guys up here. 
hopefully you can see this is a little different than what I was just doing, so I think it's good. So I'm gonna yank that bit out before I even, um, before I even get it out of the bag because I don't want it to go everywhere. So, let's see. So I'm just yanking at the spots that I know are high VM because get them out now before I open it and it just goes everywhere. No big deal. Okay, so we feel better. Most of that heavy VM is off. Some of this I'll be able to shake out. So I'm gonna dump. And this is a pretty hefty fleece. So this is a border lester. This came from Sage River Ranch out in Kimberly, Oregon. Um, sorry, I'm just making sure I stay organized behind here. This is a giant fleece. So I have said it before, but I am not a perfectionist about this. I can tell you right now, I don't want any of this. This is like poop bits. This is part of our butt end. So I'm gonna pull that before I even kind of pull the stuff that I don't want. All that, you can see a little more. It's just soiled poopness. So let's get it out now, why not? This is kind of all soiled. And I skirt heavily because I don't want to deal. There's a lot of wool out there and I just want to get rid of the stuff that I don't want. No sense in struggling. But if you're only going to do one fleece a year, you certainly could get a lot more fancy than what I do. So over here I can see I don't really want that, so we're going to pull it out. And you can see, so this is cut side down. See how beautiful that is? That's not what we want to look at right now. We want to open it up. You can see as I do, I'm just going to pick out stuff here. We want to open it up so that our cut side is down. Okay, so we're just going to work on this chunk. This is an enormous fleece. I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm still pulling little bits like this off. Usually those are kind of going to be on the end because they're the boots. And I pick little, you know, I pick stuff out. I'm not meticulous. Tiny little things I'm not going to pick out a lot. But I'll just go chunk by chunk through it to keep it manageable. Picking that stuff. It does not have to be perfect. You don't, you can see how I laid it out. I did not lay it out perfect. It doesn't matter. Unless you need it to be that way. I have watched um, people skirt and they get a little uh, serious about like, where's the head, where's this? So I don't care. I just try to get the job done, right? And you can see these locks, absolutely stunning. This is actually, uh, this is I think the second or third fleece I've done that I've gotten from them. And I have bought wool from them before, just not direct. Um, and it's really stunning. So I'm going to pull this chunk Put it back into the bag, it's my good stuff, and we'll bring another big chunk over here. So you can see. There is not a whole lot of skirting that needs done on this fleece. Pick out some of those big spots. Spots that are a little more, so that has a little more VM in it. When I wash it, it's gonna be so obvious. So we're gonna just pull that now. Work through, I mean, this is honestly absolutely stunning. Not a whole lot for me to skirt. So, I don't even have to open it up that much, which a lot of times I kind of just pull, look, see if there's anything like, ugh, but there's really nothing here. So, just pull this section out that I've looked through. Might give it a quick little shake, but you can see there's not much falling out there. Add it to the bag, work on the next chunk. And it's how I work, partially because my skirting table is so full right now that it's just easier for me having to empty the whole table is just a pain in the butt. So I'm going to, and you can see that's a little different. It doesn't have that same crimp all the way through the top. It's pretty dirty. So I'm going to pull that. Same thing here. We're just going to pull. And I just am opening, pulling. Some stuff will drop out on its own. Some stuff I need to pick up. This little chunk is good. I probably couldn't have asked for a much cleaner fleece here to show you guys. So, 
looks like, so you can see how this is a little bit different, a little more crimped up. That's belly wool. Totally is up to you. Some people will chuck belly wool. I basically go on, if it's nice, I'm going to keep it. Um, if it's super short, I won't keep it. Um, and this is, it looks super short, but it actually, once I pull it out, is not. It's very clean. So I'm going to keep it. It's not felted. I can just pull it apart easily. So we're going to keep all that. I'm going to pause you guys for a sec while I take a layer off. I'm very warm. And I'll get the next chunk laid out. Okay. So here's a chunk that I'm probably going to let go of. This is definitely much more by the neck. There's tons of, especially up here, lots of little bits of EM. I'm not even going to deal with it when it's that heavy. It's just not worth my time. And the person who takes a lot of my scrap wool now will probably be excited to get that wool. She's like, you have some nice wool in your scrap wool. And I'm like, yes, I am a heavy skirter. Um, so we're moving on to the next section. You guys, this fleece is pretty phenomenal, which is why I love getting wool from them because there's not much in the way of VM. There's not much in the way of mud. We're gonna take this and we'll get the next section going. Got some bookity bookities. Who knows? Who knows? Better not to ask. Just say it's poop. It's easier. So here we are. Just picking bits. You can kind of see out like on that. That's just going to break off. So we're going to get and that's probably down by the rump. So I just keep opening. It's all very clean and beautiful. And the nice thing about border luster is that it doesn't really hold its VM well. So even what gets past me um, and I'll keep picking when I'm at the washing machine, even what gets past me will most likely drop out. And you can see that's a little bit, this is kind of down by the rump. It's a little bit different, but it's still lovely. I'm not gonna to toss it. I will salvage more than maybe some people would, but I also am not gonna spend an exorbitant amount of time picking at stuff. So, they keep making wool every year, these sheep. So, no sense to drive yourself batty. See, there's kind of some, I thought it was about to start raining, but no. Okay, so this is a little more gunky. So we're just gonna, you can see how different that fiber is right there. So we're gonna just yank that bit. And not exactly the best, it's not, you know, this is down by the rump. That's kind of where the fiber does change. So it, when it changes a lot and it's not great, I will definitely, ooh, that was kind of a squishy poop across. Um, if you don't like poop, this is not, I mean, not that I like poop, but if you are super grossed out by poop, this may not be the job for you. Um, there's not a lot of second cuts even in here, which is great. So stuff like this, it's pretty gunky. I'm going to toss it. Like I said, Lorita will probably be excited. This all looks great. Here's some stuff that's like, eh. Yank it. Some second cuts. Not too bad though. Okay. We're almost done with this fleece. So it generally takes me maybe 10 minutes at the most to do a fleece. It really just depends on the fleece. Sometimes it's just like gets out on the table, it's beautiful, pack it back up. Um, depends on how much energy I have and how quickly if I'm trying to skirt a fleece on my way out the door or so I can keep skirting as it's going into the washing machine. All right, so, all right, this guy looks like we're getting a little bit gunky. This is kind of towards the end. Um, we're gonna, see, you can see that. We don't want that. This is a little bit dirtier, probably down by the rump, but it's fine. It's gonna wash up fine. I'll give it a little extra shake. Um, but really, pretty good. Here's some that will... Sometimes I miss stuff. That's all right. I'm the only one to have to deal with it. So here's some chunks. And this is... So this is up by the neck. 
It's absolutely stunning fiber. It's probably the softest fiber in the fleece, but look at how short it is. So it's not gonna do anything. It's just gonna fall out when I process this fleece. So I don't worry about it. Um, here's some belly wool, but it's really nice belly wool. It's not weak, so we're gonna keep it in there. This all looks really good. It's a little bit dirty, but that's like piece of cake dirty. So let's get this chunk out. We just have this last little bit to go. And um, you can see here we're a little bit like in this section. It's actually the wrong side. And you know, the cut side is always going to be the more beautiful side. <laughs> the VM has not made its way down, hopefully. So in here, I'm probably, I'm going to keep that. It's not too bad. I've got some stuff. Not too bad. There's a chunk that's just short and it's not going to stay in. A little high VM. You can see here's some black wool. Obviously not from the sheep. Just another sheep that got shorn that day. No big deal. Um, and the more you open it up, here's some other black. We'll just get those out. No, no worries about opening it up because the more you open it up, it's just a bit more chance for stuff to fall out. So it's a little higher VM in here. Here's some stuff that I won't keep. Some poop kind of at the very end of this fleece. So it's just remnants of stuff and I might give it a good shake out. And that's kind of how I do my skirting. You know, if the fleece is rolled perfectly and life is perfect, then um, here's a little kemp. I should show you the kemp. There's some kemp, maybe or maybe not from this sheep, but it's, it would fall out during processing, but um, no sense in keeping it. It's not too bad, so we just have one last little chunk over here, and then we're done. Just pulling out little black hairs. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. If I want perfect commercial, you know, I go by commercial yarn, right? So there you go. And then after I'm done, I just kind of do a quick sweep over my table to get random stuff out in case I'm not doing the same fleece or whatever. So anyway, guys, I hope that helps. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, I hope that helped. I'm gonna do more skirting videos as soon as I get back. I have more skirting to do. Um, I'll be working on, I'm finishing up yarn club when I get back. It's all spun up. We just, I just have to do all the finishing touches and package it and do all that stuff when I get back and I'll be working on fiber club and I will be cranking out product for black sheep, which I will let you guys in on some of it before it goes to black sheep. So keep watching cause some, there's some really, I'm really excited about some stuff I get to make here soon. Okay guys, that's it. Can you believe it? This is so weird doing these shorties, but they actually are. Um, I'm not gonna say less work, but they're just a little bit less build up for me as far as notes and things like that. I can kind of think it through in smaller segments. So it's working for me. It sounds like the comments you guys are giving me are that you guys are enjoying it too. So awesome. Okay. I'll see you guys in a few days and I'll probably share some pictures from my trip because I know we're doing a bonfire at the beach one night after the graduation. So it should be a nice trip. Okay. Until next time, everybody take care, stay healthy. Make lots of pretty things.